Yeah. This video is supported by Brilliant.org. These are some two by sixes. Well, they're not exactly two by six, but they're close enough. I want to turn these into a really cool geometric wall art sculpture thing, which means a whole lot of triangles. You see that little dude? You don't want any part in it. That is the pith of the tree. So the dead center of the tree. And because the radius rings go all the way around, that means that whenever this board expands and contracts, it's going to twist and cup and break and crack and all the things that you don't want. So when you're buying lumber, try not to get something with the pith in it. This one snuck by me. All my boards are milled up, so now it's time to cut a bunch of triangles. Now all these triangles are gonna be equilateral triangles. If you remember way back in your geometry class, equilateral triangles mean that all the sides are all the same length, which means all the interior angles are the same. The interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, which means all three of our angles are 60 degrees. Important so that we don't cut the wrong angle when making all of these. I cut a ton of triangles. Well, actually cut a lot of extra ones because I know me and well, I could mess up at some point. So now uh, I wanna make this three dimensional. So I'm gonna take these and turn them into a pyramid, which means cutting angles on them. So here's what I'm thinking. Now I'm completely making this up off the top of my head because well, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna set my table saw blade to 30 degrees and then I'm gonna use a jig and a whole bunch of double-sided tape to stick my piece onto that jig really, really good so it's secure and then basically make a cut, rotate it around, make another cut, rotate it around, and make another cut. Kind of came across a little bit of a problem with my triangles and trying to cut the bevels. Sometimes I would cut them and they would look perfect. And then I would cut another one and it was utterly destroyed. Not just tear out giant chips and cracks and utterly unusable. So I was trying to figure out, why are some of them working out great, some of them not so much? And it came down to the grain direction. I drew some lines on the board so you can see the grain direction. So if I've got my blade tilted at an angle, I am pushing my piece through the blade and the blade is spinning and coming down this way. It is cutting with the grain. I get a good clean cut. I flip my piece over. Now the grain is running side to side and I make my cut. I still get a clean cut when I flip it this way, and now the blade is cutting, and you see as it goes down, it is going against the grain and cutting these fibers. That's when my piece basically just explodes. Typically cutting against the grain, is not a big deal, but in this case, it's a little bit more complicated because the blade's at an angle and we're doing bevels and those bevels are colliding and then boom. So I also tried like the painter's tape method, put some painter's tape on it, try to reduce tear out, didn't work. So after trying every combination, this is the only method that worked, which is cut against the grain first. It'll be a pretty good cut. And then make the other cuts. It'll be a perfect pyramid. All that being said, while I did make quite a few extra ones, I didn't make that many extra ones when I count in finding some random knots and stuff inside it after I, I cut the board. So I gotta make more triangles. I cut all my triangles, they look great. That was a whole lot of bevels. It took a long time, but they're finally done. And then I sanded everything with 180 grit. Looks really good. Now the plan is to take some stains and basically just stain them in different colors, all kind of in like a cool family of colors. And I think that's gonna give us some awesome visual elements with all those bevels. As far as the stain goes, I'm gonna use some General Finishes water-based stain, not sponsored. 
I just kind of like this stuff. Now, the great thing about them is that they dry super fast. So in a couple hours, this should be pretty much dry and I could probably apply a top coat to it. A downside to using this stuff is that since it's water-based, when you apply it to the wood, it's gonna raise the grain. And well, I don't want that. I just spent all my time sanding these, but there's an easy way to, to fix that. All I had to do was squirt it with a little bit of water. Didn't have to soak it. Just get the board wet let it dry and then come back and just lightly sand it with a little bit of 220 grit just to knock those grains back down so they're smooth. And now we're good to go because when I apply the finish to these, it's not gonna raise the grain again and it's gonna stay super smooth. The stain is dry, I only applied one coat. I feel like I got pretty good cover, so I didn't need to add any more. So now I'm just putting on a water-based finish. This is just a mat so that there's no sheen at all to it. And this should probably dry in just a couple hours. I applied one coat of finish to this. I'm gonna apply the other coats after the whole thing is done. Just wanted to kind of seal in uh, some of that stain. So here's my plan now. I have some quarter inch thick MDF. I cut these to the width of a triangle and they're like 30 inches long. That looks about 30 inches long, fine. So what I'm gonna do is glue a row on here and I'm gonna do that four times. And I'm gonna keep them separate like this because then I can hang them on the wall with spaces or I can put them together and make one big piece or I can flip it around and do some combination of things. Provides me a lot more flexibility. So now gluing these onto these. Yeah. I'm trying to decide what color combination do I want? That color with that color or that color with that color? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. Just for looks, I cut some bevels on the underside of all of the edges and now it's Time for more finish. While we're applying finish, let me take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, which is Brilliant.org. Now, if you've never heard of Brilliant, I highly recommend that you check them out because, well, they're really cool and they're kind of geared towards people like us who like to make things. They're an interactive learning platform. So they got all these lessons, thousands of lessons that you can take that feel more like games and puzzles than actual learning lessons. Now, imagine you want to design a bridge and see what you can do before it collapses. You can play a game that teaches you that. Or if you want to visualize gears and how they spin and what happens when you adjust those, you can do that too. Or you could terraform Mars. Seriously, that's kind of cool. But here is why I really like Brilliant. This video was not supposed to be a video sponsored by Brilliant. Not at all. I had this idea of making some sort of artwork that had triangles to it. And I knew, well, they should be equilateral triangles. Well, okay, well, I instantly know what to set my table saw setting at to cut those angles, because I know those angles have to be at 60 degrees. And then I thought, how do I know this? I haven't been in a geometry class in like almost 30 years. That hurts to say. And then I realized, honestly, I got that from doing my classes on Brilliant because I've been on there messing around and learning all kinds of stuff about geometry because that's something that I wanted to brush up on and I did not realize it until I was halfway through this project. You can try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days if you go to brilliant.org slash newtonmakeser. Just go down to the video description. I put a link down there that you can check out. Now the first 200 people that use that link can get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for helping to make this video possible and for just coming up with a really cool way of learning. It turned out so cool. The triangles with the bevels just catch light in a bunch of different ways and it becomes a bit mind trippy. And then also you can make it with scrap wood, you can make it with two by fours, you can paint them, you can stain them a bunch of different colors. It's pretty cool. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.